Jan has lived here for 22 years, and I have to say that I have been meeting, well, people, friends of mine that I play tennis with, or seems like every time I mention something, her name comes up, and she knows everybody, and they always speak such wonderful words about you. I have to tell you that. So the 22 years, of, you've made a big impact on this town. She grew up in Rock Hill, South Carolina, taught school in Fairfax, Virginia, in Washington, D.C., was married to Dan Zinn, raised a family with three sons in Annapolis, Maryland. So Jan, let's welcome Jan, who is giving an But my topic today is L2, Donald Zero. Donald is my middle son. He's the only overachiever I have. So he, uh, he's a big hunter, and he's taken up bow hunting in the last uh, five or six years, and he's quite good. So this year, he came out prepared for the season for L2 bringing his bow and all the arrows and uh, all the clothes. I'd like to tell you about the clothes. There are white outfits for a day that, I, I guess, is that for a dark day? I'm not sure. Maybe you can help me, some of you hunters. And then there's the camouflage outfit. And the third outfit, I can't remember what it was, but he had an entire trunk in the back of his big trunk that was all closed. And he brought it in the house and I opened it. He said, don't open that. They have to be sanitary. They're for, for my hunting. So he leaves those in the room. <laughs> then, now he's here, a, he's here a week before hunting season begins. So he drives over to uh, somewhere near Camas and he is scouting the elk. He comes back and he's found the ideal place. But he goes out one day, and he, ha he brings three blinds with him. And you have to put up a ladder. He walks in two miles from where he parks his truck, carrying one metal blind, and somehow attaches it into a tree. Then the second day, he goes, it's pretty much the same area, but a little distance. But he has seen an enormous herd of elk. So he's sure this is the place that he will get you know, his big elk. Um, the third day he goes out and he puts another blind up and another tree, but all in this same uh, area. Now his friend George is a retired doctor. George comes from Telluride. <clears throat> this is where they hunted last year. George brings his big red truck. <clears throat> Finally, the day to go hunt comes. They go out. They drive separately. Donald comes back that night. I got my L. Oh, great. He, yeah, he said, I got him right here. And he said, but do you know what he did? He turned around, pulled the arrow out of his butt. <laughs> but now half of it is still in there. Okay, oh. and the L runs away. Now, Donald and George chase after this elk. They spend the rest of the day looking for this elk because they assume that he's going to drop dead. They don't find him. <clears throat> Next day they hunt. Donald comes back and his black truck on the left side, the, the light's gone, it's <laughs> thinned, um, just terrible shape. No problem, Mom. I've got insurance. They'll take care of it. So he continues to hunt. No help. George, his friend, goes out. This is about the fifth day of hunting. George comes back, and his truck is like this. The hood is like an accordion. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> no help during this entire time. That's why I say that the name of my speech is L2, Donald Zero. <laughs> You're st it's not working. <laughs> Your lights. <laughs> 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 They're either 
too long or too short. <laughs>